One of the first times I ever had a chance to do public speaking was, uh, was in my Boy Scout troop. Uh, I had to get up and convince the other Boy Scouts that I would be the best senior patrol leader. I don't remember what my speech was. I, don't, I think it was, we'll do more fun things. Um, I promised, my dad was my scoutmaster. I probably said something along the lines of, I'll try to you know, make sure he's not too tough. Uh, and then we'll do more fun things. I, I don't remember exactly what the speech was. I do remember uh, that, uh, that it was a tight race, and eventually I became a senior patrol leader. I don't even remember if I won that particular election. Uh, but I just remember getting up in front of the crowd, and with, with, with my knees were shaking, and uh, uh, in many ways, uh, that's been the experience. Uh, I find that if if I'm not invested in what I'm about to say, because I'm usually nervous every Sunday, everybody says, well, you know, you should be used to it by now. I said, this is the word of God that I'm bringing to the people. If my knees aren't shaking a little bit, I'm in trouble. Uh, and so I'm, uh, I'm glad for the opportunity to talk on Scout Sunday about that this is following up on our scripture from last week where Paul said that I will be whatever I need to be, whatever it takes, to share the gospel. And uh, one of the ways that I've seen that in my life is uh, with, my, with my dad as my scoutmaster. Um, some of you may be familiar with how he would have become a scoutmaster. He was not a scout as a child. Uh, my brother joined, my brother's five years older than I am. And he joined the scouting and um, they looked around the room to the parents and they said, we need some of you to sign up to be assistant scoutmasters. And the room kind of got quiet, and everyone kind of started looking at the floor and <laughs> looking at their shoes. And, and one of the scout ma or the scoutmaster turned to my dad and he said, you know, Ralph, why don't you be a, an assistant scoutmaster? He says, I, I've never been in scouting before. Uh, and of course, my, my brother was a you know, coming in as a scout at Tenderfoot. Um, but my dad said, uh, I'll do it. He was a, he had been in JC, and he was one that he, you know, when he saw something new to, to happen, he did it, not knowing at all what he was going to be doing. Because about two or three months later, the scoutmaster moved. <laughs> and so they're sitting around the troop table, and uh, they're looking at all the different leaders of the troop, and they're saying, well, one of us has to be scoutmaster. And everybody starts looking at their shoes, and looking at their shoelaces, and my dad says, well, I've never done it before, but I'll try. Um, and uh, 17 years later, uh, he was still trying for a long time when he passed away. Uh, had, by that time, had gone to the, the district council and wasn't scoutmaster. But uh, I remember my brother went through, took a few years, and then I went through behind him. When I was about to get my Eagle Scout badge, and, and, and uh, I asked Paul Brinkley if I was allowed to wear this on my, I uh, said, so this is my uniform for Sunday. So. I said, I don't exactly wear the same size shirt I did when I was a boy scout. Um, so I'm going to need to, I'm going to need to wear it on my road. Um, when I was about to get that, I, I told my dad, I said, well, this is going to be neat because you get a chance to retire. And uh, he said, oh, no. Um, he said, I don't have any plan on retiring because there are boys that need me. And I, I think of that type of dedication when I think of this verse. Uh, or this, these verses here where um, where Paul is saying you know, in this first part of the passage you know, that I will be you know, all things to all people. But he, in this one he's saying I'm going to do it so that, so that I win the prize. You know, I'm not going to do this halfway. And if my goal is to make disciples, then I'm going to make disciples. And I'm going to do as we talked about last week, whatever it takes. And in this way, in this week, he's saying we need to be intentional about it. We need to run to win. And I don't know, you know, we're not going to set up the Winstead Marathon after service this morning. You know, we're not going to ask everybody to start running marathons where you're going to get a, a little wreath if you win. Um, I guarantee that you would beat me. Uh, so you know, you'd be all right. In this passage, though, he's talking about athletes. When you get ready to run a race, you don't plan to fail. 
You plan to win. And he's saying in, in life, now he's saying whatever, he says, if I have to punish my body and even enslave it, I'm going to give everything I have so that after proclaiming others or to, to others, I myself should not be disqualified. He wants to make as many disciples as he can. So the question for us today, I mean, not just on Scout Sunday, but every Sunday is, what is it that we're trying to teach the people around us? What is it that we're trying to accomplish in life? It may be the scouts that are here. It may be a, a coworker that sees uh, that you're having a, a, a tough day and how you handle that teaches them how to handle their own difficult day. It may be that family member that's going through something that maybe only you and God know about. And when you call them and you, you say, I just want you to know today, I'm not, even gonna, I'm not gonna ask you about it, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. That you're doing things intentionally to win. Uh, and to win people to Christ. That if you're not living for that, then I guess the question might be, what lesser thing are you living for? I, mean, I remember the week when my father died. Uh, it was the same week that one of our teenagers in our youth group had been killed uh, in a car accident. And I remember thinking on the way to my father's funeral. It doesn't matter how good and healthy you are. I mean, it does. But in this case, it didn't. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're young or old, rich or poor, there's nothing. We couldn't buy another day of life. I'm so thankful that my father put stock in things that wouldn't pass away immediately. You know, that, uh, that he spent his life because uh, there might be a, a child that needs him somewhere. He stayed on at Scout Mass. And I'm not saying that you all need to you know, sign up. And Paul, you may have a, a rush on Scout Master this week for people that want to sign up for that. It might not be Scouts. There's something, though, that you're called to be a part of that's greater than yourself. Jesus named it. He said, I want you to go and fish for people. Make disciples of all nations. Teaching them everything that I tell them. Are you using every effort of your day, of your week, to make sure the people around you know about the love of Jesus Christ? Because if you're not, then you're not running to win. You're just running. We've got a lot of people in this country right now that are on the treadmill. Uh, you know, the one where you're running fast but you're not going anywhere? You know, well, I mean, Dave Ramsey talked about it when he was talking about it. You know, he and his wife were traveling one day and she said, Dave, we're lost. And he says, yeah, but we're making great time. <laughs> you know, if you're not running for God, you're just running. And you're not going to win. Because that's the finish line. The finish line is making disciples of Christ. Being a disciple means making a disciple. Because that's what Jesus did. He taught people. He wants us to be like him. And so for you today, where in your life is God saying, I want you to open up. I want you to plan to be more available. Plan to be more intentional. To plan to be used by God for something greater than just living for yourself. Because then... You'll be running to win. And you'll get something that's so far more valuable than a, a gold medal at the Olympics. You'll have a new brother or sister in Christ. And what is that? It's worth everything. It's what he died for. As we turn today to sing together, before we do that, I want you to, to think for a moment. Lord, as I look around all the things in my life, sometimes I have not been living for you. Sometimes I've not been honoring your faithfulness in a way that people will see. So I want you to pray for just a minute.
few moments, and I pray we can please play that hymn. We're gonna, I'm just going to let this hymn, you may know the hymn, you can turn to it if you don't, Greatest Thy Faithfulness. But I just want you to pray for a few moments about the faithfulness of God to you and have you been doing all that you can do to share His name with others. Move us back to the right track. 